What's up guys, this is Zach with Toptic Nation, and today we're going to be looking at another expanded deck just to kind of continue our coverage in this brand new expanded format, and that is going to be Seismitoad EX featuring Seviper. So I do apologize guys for not having a whole lot of content up the last couple weeks. Uh, life has been kind of crazy uh, with the new semester starting, with the work, uh, classes, and everything going on. So I do apologize about that again, but hopefully in the next couple weeks or so I can get back into that routine, try to push out a few videos a week, and hopefully uh, bring back the stream as well. That is something I'd like to bring back. But today we are going to be looking at a brand new deck in the expanded format. Uh, I am pretty excited about this because uh, now we have Burning Shadows, we have Guardians Rising, Lots of new cards to bring into the mix, and I think Seismato decks really benefit from it because you gain a lot of new cards like Seviper and Plumeria and Guzma and Acerola, uh, just so many things that just makes the deck a lot different than it used to be, so I am pretty excited to go over that, and this is a deck that I hadn't really seen a whole lot about. Uh, I saw a little bit of hype in some set reviews on some websites when it first came out, they'd kind of mentioned it, but I haven't actually seen any YouTubers uh, make this deck, so I thought I'd be the first to kind of dive into that and I have been kind of testing this deck and it's been really fun, really uh, aggressive and I would like to kind of share with you how the deck works. So um, as you can see, the main attacker here, it is just going to be Seismitoad EX, uh, the infamous Seismitoad that finally rotated just a year or two ago, uh, but it has that quaking punch attack. So it does 30 damage and then your opponent can't play item cards. Now uh, you might think that the card isn't quite as relevant anymore because a lot of people just aren't playing a lot of items, but in Expanded it's actually more of an item centric format. Uh, in standard, people have kind of adjusted. Uh, they've just kind of decided, hey, Garbodor is a thing. I don't really have to play a lot of items. I can just play more supporters, more energy, uh, and I can definitely get by that way. But in expanded, it's a little bit different. Garbodor is still a thing. Espeon Garbodor, uh, Galissapod Garbodor, uh, you know, they have done pretty well at the recent Fort Wayne regionals, but item decks are still pretty big and expanded. And so Quaking Punch, in my opinion, is still pretty relevant. As especially with all of the new uh, items and tools and stuff we're kind of working with uh, with this deck. So Seismitoad's doing 30 damage, Quaking Punch is preventing your opponent from playing those item cards like Trainer's Mel, VS Seeker, Ultra Ball, uh, the list really goes on. So uh, that is pretty disruptive in itself, but we have a lot of damage modifiers that are really going to bump that up from 30 uh, all the way to like 90 or 100, just doing a lot of damage over the course of the game and hopefully uh, disrupting your opponent that way as well. So so first of all, we have the Verbank City Gem and Hypnotoxic Laser combination. So Hypnotoxic Laser is a natural partner for Seismitoad because it's poisoning your opponent, adding that damage up really quickly for Quaking Punch. Uh, it also has a 50% chance of making your opponent's active asleep. So that's really good for uh, just kind of disruption as well. Uh, if they don't wake up, maybe you can get an additional Quaking Punch and just get a really cheap knockout that way. Uh, but then there's also Verbank City Gem, and I think this is why that, that combination really works. So Verbrink City Gem says that it puts two more damage counters on poison Pokemon between turns. So uh, that's already the 30 from Quaking Punch, the 10 more from Hypnotoxic Laser, and then 20 more from Verbrink City Gem. So you're already doing 60 damage. And as you can see, uh, that damage is going to keep piling up there. But we also have a couple other ways to add that damage as well. Um, I'm actually playing Fighting Fury Belt over something like Choice Band or Muscle Band. Uh, the main reason is because uh, it makes Seismitoad a lot bulkier. So uh, it's awfully hard to knock out something that has 220 HP versus 180. So uh, I'm really looking at decks like Night March, uh, Gardevoir, a lot of cards that are relevant in the expanded format. So that brings Seismitoad up to 220 HP, and it's going to be doing 10 additional damage. So uh, that's going to be 30 from Quaking Punch, uh, 40 from that laser, 60 from Verbink, and now we're at 70 with the Fighting Fury Belt. Um, and you would think that's actually good enough, but we now have Seviper in the deck, and Seviper, the ability is really fitting, that name, more poison. Put one more damage counter on your opponent's poison Pokemon between turns. So that extra 20, if you've been keeping that math up, that is going to be doing 90 damage a turn, but between turns, your opponent is also going to be taking uh, not only that Verbink City and laser damage, but also Seviper. So, I mean, we're doing up to like 100 a turn, I think. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Uh, they're going to be taking a bunch of damage between turns, and then we just kind of respond with Quaking Punch for the knockout. So, in other words, uh, we're really taking that turn away that used to be there where Seismitoad, uh, it was kind of awkward. Seismitoad would damage it. 
and then it would uh, come back to you and you'd have to damage it again. And it just got kind of repetitive. If our opponent played like uh, like a switch card or uh, now we have Guzma and things like that, it really makes uh, Seismitoad pretty weak if they draw into those kind of cards. But now there's basically a one turn timetable. And if your opponent can't really do anything, Seismitoad can quickly take those knockouts. So I really like that combination of Seviper, uh, Laser Bank, and Quaking Punch. So that is the main strategy of the deck, guys. I'm going to go over some other cards here. Of course, we're playing two top of Lele. We're playing a ton of supporters, especially one of supporters in the deck. So top of Lele is great for that. But as you can see, energy drive is for a DCE, which that's all we're really playing anyways for double colorless energy. So top of Lele is a great secondary attacker as well. Um, and I found myself using it, especially in the game you guys are going to see after this deck profile. Uh, you can just kind of pile energy on top of Lele and kind of use it as a late game finisher. So I really like that. And of course, we're playing the three Seviper. I think three Seviper is fine because uh, most of the time I just want to couple these guys out. That's enough to make that math uh, pretty much perfect. But uh, and a lot of times, if you want three Seviper, that's definitely a thing. Uh, you can actually donk your opponent if you have a Verbink City Gem and three Survipers out. So if you're going against something like a Greninja deck or a Night March or anything that just has like 50 or 60 HP, uh, Trevenant, for example, uh, there's actually the possibility to donk your opponent that way. I don't know how common that would be. Uh, most of the time, probably not going to happen. You know, you're really just kind of focused on setting up Seismitoad. You don't want to have to keep going uh, really aggressive with Survivors, but you never know that option is there. And then finally, we're playing uh, two copies of Shaman EX for that setup ability. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like Shaman anymore because they favor Tapu Lele, but I think in this deck uh, we like having both because Tapu Lele searches out our supporters, uh, but Shaman is really aggressive. We can quickly thin out our hand with cards like Ultra Ball and Plumeria, and then we can just use Shaman to use that setup ability and keep drawing cards and hopefully draw into what we need. So Verbink City, uh, Lasers, Puzzle of Times, whatever you need. Now, as far as our supporters go, we're playing a lot of supporters. Uh, we're playing four Professor Sycamore. That's pretty standard. Uh, this is probably the best supporter in this deck just because you want to keep being aggressive. Uh, you don't want to turn where you don't have the Hypnotoxic Laser and Quaking Punch combination. So even if you have to burn through your deck and get rid of a bunch of cards, that's okay since we are playing Puzzle of Time and Special Charge to get those back. So uh, that is why we're playing four Professor Sycamore. Uh, we're also playing two Acerola, and originally I played one of this card in the deck, but I had to bump it up to two because it's just so, so good. Uh, Acerola lets you basically scoop up a Pokemon that's damaged, and you actually get to uh, take all the cards attached to it back to your hand. So way better than AZ in a deck that uses something like Double Colorless or Fighting Fury Belt. So uh, really just natural synergy with Seismitoad. And your opponent's going to get really annoyed here because they might come really close to knocking it out. Maybe they have like 170 damage on it uh if a fighting fury belts on seismato maybe they did like 200 or 210 and then you just acerola and scoop it back up and just repeat that process so really annoying for your opponent we're also going to be playing two copies of guzma uh guzma is also great in here just because there's that combination where i can guzma something up i can uh bring up something that has a float stone on it and then just kind of retreat back out into the seismitoad and hopefully lock my opponent there uh, especially if they have something with a high retreat cost so guzma is really good in this deck and prevents your opponent from those plays where maybe late game you don't have the dce and they bring up a seismitoad uh that really isn't going to work here because guzma is going to give us an out to retreat back into the seismitoad with the DCE. And as far as the rest of the supporters go, we have a bunch of one of cards here. We've got uh, N. Uh, N is really good early game as well as late game, depending on what kind of strategy you're doing. Uh, early game, it's great to get a fresh hand of six cards just to kind of draw into what you need if you don't want to have to discard uh, your hammers or your lasers or something like that. But late game, it's also really good. It can prevent you from decking out, for example. Um, it can disrupt your opponent, get them down to one or two cards. So hopefully uh, late game quaking punch can kind of seal the game there. Uh, we're also going to be playing chorus and chorus is really great against those decks that play uh, Skyfield, for example. Um, if your opponent has a full bench, uh, if they have five Pokemon on the bench, and maybe you have a few Pokemon as well, Chorus is going to let you draw uh, just a ton of cards. And if they're playing Skyfield, they can have up to eight on their bench. Uh, and maybe you just decide you want to put eight on your bench as well. So Chorus can actually max out at a whopping 16 cards. Uh, probably not great in the first couple turns of the game, but after that, it's just really, really good. We're also going to be playing a copy of Hex Maniac. 
Uh, and I know this kind of goes against the theme of the deck. We're playing a bunch of abilities here like Setup and Wonder Tag and more Poison, but Hex Maniac is mainly there for decks like Greninja, uh, Trebinet, for example, just to kind of get out of that. But uh, in my testing, it's actually really good against Night March as well, especially against Marsh Shadow and Mew. So it's shutting off their abilities, and so they no longer can use that Night March attack, and so they're going to have to retreat out into like a Joltic or a Pumpkaboo, for example, and have to waste those. So Hex Maniac is really really strong in that regard we're also playing a copy of Plumeria. Uh, previously, Seismato decks probably used something like Team Flare Grunt or Zerosic, uh, but of course, Phil Blower did replace Zerosic. I think Phil Blower is just an amazing card, but as far as Team Flare Grunt, we are replacing it with Plumeria, and I think Plumeria is just so much better, mainly because it's discarding an energy from any of your opponent's Pokemon. Team Flare Grunt only worked on the active, so it was kind of limited. It was kind of situational. Uh, now, you do have to discard two cards to use Plumeria, but that's not a big deal, just because we can get those back with Puzzle of Time. Uh, maybe mid to late game, uh, there's a bunch of cards we want to get rid of anyway, like Ultra Balls or uh, Supporters we're not really going to be using throughout the game. So in general, I think Plumeria is just a very strong form of disruption in this deck. And then finally, since we are really reliant on using those hypnotoxic lasers throughout the game, we are playing a copy of Shadow Triad. So we haven't really seen that in a long time. Typically, it's in like uh, Genesect Verizian decks. Uh, it's in uh, Plasma decks from a few years ago. But I do like it in here because uh, hypnotoxic laser is actually a team plasma card. So basically, you can top a Lele for the Shadow Triad to get the laser. Or even in the late game, you can VS Seeker for Shadow Triad and get that laser as well. So lots of options. Um, I think between four Hypnotoxic Laser and Shadow Triad and Puzzle of Time, I think that's, uh, you know, like a maximum 13 lasers you can use throughout the game. Uh, not that you'll ever use that many, but I think that's just a ton of outs to uh, using Hypnotoxic Laser. So that there should be no shortage in using that card throughout the game. So I think that covers the supporters. Uh, as far as the item cards go, we are playing a bunch of items here. So you do want to kind of watch out if you're playing against a deck like Garbodor. Uh, with the trash lynch attack, of course, you don't want to put too many items in your discard, but we are pretty heavily reliant on our item cards. Of course, we're playing our four hypnotoxic laser, uh, but we're also playing four crushing hammer and one enhanced hammer. So uh, throughout the game, we just want to keep flipping heads on those hammers, disrupting our opponent even more. Uh, we just need the one enhanced hammer because we already played the other hammers, Plumeria, uh, Puzzle of Time to get all that stuff back. So I think one enhanced hammer uh, is the way to go here. We're also playing a copy of Fill Blower, and again, we're just playing one copy here because we can always recycle it back with Puzzle of Time, but Fill Blower is really good to knock off those stadiums, especially something like Silent Lab, which you could see in the expanded format in a Trevenant deck or another kind of deck, maybe like a Seismitoad Crobat deck, for example. And leading into that, we are playing four Puzzle of Time. Uh, of course, it has two effects. You can rearrange the top three cards of your deck if you play one down, so that could be pretty good with Shaman. But uh, if you play both of them down, you get any two cards back from the discard into your hand. So that's really, really strong. You can actually bring a Puzzle of Time back. So maybe you just grab a card and Puzzle of Time, and then maybe you can play uh, that second of Puzzle of Time in your hand to get back two more cards. So that is a uh, combination that people don't really think about, that is there, but Puzzle Time is great to get back pretty much anything you need. If you're out of VS Seekers, you can grab Supporters that way. Uh, if you need Lasers or Verbank City Gem, it's a great way to get that back. Uh, it's also a good way to get back your Pokemon as well, and we aren't playing any kind of recovery card like Super Rod or Rescue Stretcher, so uh, I think with the thicker counts that we're playing here, it shouldn't be a problem, but if you do need to get those Pokemon back, you can always use uh, Puzzle of Time. And of course, we're playing uh, four Ultra Ball, four VS Seeker. Those are pretty standard. VS Seeker is especially powerful in here just because we want to keep using Acerola, uh, some other supporters like Chorus throughout the game, uh, Ultra Ball searching out our Pokemon. Uh, we're also playing a copy of Special Charge because we're only playing four DCE uh, for our energy count. So Special Charge is a great way to get that back without having to waste our puzzle of times. Uh, I already mentioned that we're playing three copies of Fighting Fury Belt. Again, that's just to make Seismitoad bulkier and uh, more resistant to getting those one-hit knockouts, uh, especially against something like Gardevoir. I think with 220 HP, 
Uh, if you have two energy on Seismitoad, I think Gardevoir would actually need either five energy in a choice band or six energy to knock out a Seismitoad. So that's pretty unlikely. Uh, if they do that, they're just kind of over committing. And at that point, you just kind of finish them off with a top of Lele the following turn. So I think Fighting Fury Belt is really strong in here. Uh, two Floatstone, of course, just as a way to kind of free retreat out. Uh, most of the time, it's going to be on Saviper or Top of Lele or something. But it's also pretty good to put on Seismitoad as well, just in case you can't draw into the Acerola, I can always retreat out into another attacker like Tapa Lele or Seismitone. And then concluding this list, I think I've gone over pretty much everything. Um, our A spec of choice, uh, no doubt, is going to be Computer Search. Computer Search is really going to help you early game to search out those lasers and Verbanks, uh, especially the double colorless, though. It's basically giving you an extra out into drawing that double colorless energy. But uh, I'm sure there's another way you could build this deck. I'm sure there's a more defensive approach where maybe you take out the hammers and the Computer Search and you add in something like Super Scoop Ups, uh, maybe a couple of Nest Balls to search out Survivor add a little more consistency that way but you know overall i am pretty impressed with this list i think it's pretty aggressive and expanded format i've played a number of matches against lots of different decks from night march to uh gardevoir uh mirror matches with seismitoad and giratina and it does really well against all of those so um this is pretty exciting to see this deck kind of emerge out of burning shadows and guardians rising and it'll be interesting to see how it does uh you know going ahead into the expanded format but let's go ahead and jump into a game I played on PTCGO so that way you guys can see the deck in action. So we are going to go ahead and get started here. Looks like my hand is not the greatest in the world because I've got uh, I've got to start with Top of Lele, but I do have Ultra Ball, so there is a way to uh, get that Seismitoad into play. But it looks like he's going to play an N, and as far as what I'm playing against, I see a Hoopa and a Dimension Valley, so this could be a Gardevoir EX deck, uh, the Despair Ray one, not the other one. So... Uh, yeah, so he's going to probably have a bunch of Pokemon on his bench and then just use that Despair Ray, which lets you discard uh, as many as you want. So a lot of times they'll discard pretty much everything on their bench except for the Gardevoir EX uh, and just kind of alternate between the two that way. So we see a Hoopa. He's going to get a lot of good stuff here. He's got the Gardevoir, puts an energy on it, and he's just going to pass. So this could be an opportunity if I can get the DCE maybe to kind of trap that Hoopa into play. Um, I think I can go ahead and just kind of Ultra Ball some stuff away. I don't really have to play the Hex Maniac this turn. Um, I'm more concerned with actually just getting that DCE and Floatstone out, so that way I can go ahead and be aggressive and get that attack off. So I am going to go ahead and do that. I can actually thin out my hand, uh, Hypnotoxic Laser, uh, use a Crushing Hammer, and flip a head, so that's going to be pretty nice early on. Uh, let's draw six with Shaman and see what we get here. So we're looking for that DCE, but it looks like we actually whiffed it. I don't really want to have to discard this hand, but I think I'm going to have to. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. And I think that's all I can do. I think I'm just going to pass. Uh, he is going to stay asleep, so that's pretty good. That means he can't just attach like a DCE or something and retreat out, uh, which I don't even think they play DCE in this deck. I think they usually play like five or six fairy energy, uh, and that's pretty much it. I think that's all it needs with Dimension Valley. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to see what he does here. He's going to Skyla for the Gardevoir Spirit Link. He's going to go ahead and evolve, but can he do anything else? He can Mega Turbo. And all right, so we're going to see that setup. So that's why I use Skyla. So that was pretty clever on my opponent's part, just to kind of make sure he got the Mega Turbo off. He's going to Fill Blower the uh, Fighting Fury Belt, unfortunately, but I don't really think he can do much after that. I don't think he can actually attack me this turn uh, unless he has a Floatstone or something like that. But even so, it looks like Hoopa is asleep. So that Hoopa will take 10 damage, which is not, you know, not too relevant right now. But if I can get Viper and some other stuff out, maybe. So this Crushing Hammer is going to be a Tells, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to decide and see what I want to do at this point. Do I just Sycamore? Do I uh, top a Lele and maybe I get a Chorus or something like that? Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and Sycamore. Just throw away some more stuff. In hindsight, um, I'm not sure if I discarded a Chorus early on, but uh, maybe using a Chorus would have been a better option just to draw more cards. But it doesn't really matter because I had the DCE, I have a Quaking Punch, and uh, you know these turns where he has to just attach to Hoopa and retreat out, they're really going to hurt him because one, it's putting energy in the discard, and two, uh, those are energies that are not going on that Gardevoir EX. So um, you know when he has to pass and do that, 
not the greatest in the world. So my hand is pretty good right now. I think I can VS Seeker to get something if I really need to. Um, if there's a Shadow Triad in there, that would be great. But I don't think there is right now. So this might be one of those instances where I just have to maybe Ultra Ball for Shaman or something. Um, I think even with the Hypnotoxic Laser, I'm still not really getting any knockout. Um, if they retreat or something, then that Hypnotoxic Laser is pretty much wasted. So I, I'm not even sure what to do in this instance. I think I want to be aggressive and use a laser, but I'm going to have to draw into it first. So let's go ahead and use Shaman to set up and draw a few cards. Uh, again, I do whiff it. But I do have a chorus, and I can chorus for 10, so that might be another option as well. So I'm not even sure what to do here. I think I'm going to chorus for 10. I think I'm just trying to find that laser, uh, be aggressive if I can, and I get some really good stuff here. I actually get two puzzle of time, so I'm just going to get back both of my lasers because that's pretty much the strategy of this deck. Um, I have some Viper out right now, so I'm doing an extra 10 poison damage, so uh, I think 40 between turns, which is really nice. But unfortunately, that's not enough. If I had a Fighting Fury Belt and a second Viper, I think that would have been enough. But he's sitting at 70 damage right now. Um, if he retreats out, then that means that uh, that laser's pretty much gone to waste, I guess. Uh, which I think that's what he's going to do. I think he's going to retreat out, and he has the Dimension Valley, so now he can attack since Gardevoir is a dual type. But he's actually going to be short. He's going to discard everything. Now, I do wish there was a way to just kind of one-shot the Gardevoir to win the game. But unfortunately, that's not how the deck works. Uh, the deck is really just kind of centered around two-shotting your opponent. So I'm going to use Acerola, that brand new card from Burning Shadows, I believe. And that is going to be huge just because I got to uh, wipe away all of that damage. And not only that, but I've also got... Uh, uh, computer search just in case I want to do that but it looks like his uh, Gardevoir it looks like I did poison it and so now he's in a really awkward position because he's going to take a little more damage between turns I think 50 more damage between turns and then at that point maybe I can attach to top of Lele and just kind of finish him off that way so it, he's going to play an end which I don't mind at all that's going to give me a fresh hand of six cards uh, maybe I'll draw onto something I need. I uh, get Shadow Triad just in case he tries to retreat, but he, he is going to go ahead and use that Despair Ray, so he's going to take 30 more damage. And I am in just a prime position right here. I'm really just kind of putting pressure on my opponent. Uh, he can't play items. And so he can't play things like uh, Mega Turbo or VS Seeker or uh, Super Rod if he has some energy in the discard, uh, Guard of Our Spirit Links, for example. So I'm just going to continue to do that. I'm just going to bring up the top of Lele this time. Um, I see an opening to get a really quick knockout because I think after the poison damage, that is still a knockout thanks to Viper. So let's go ahead and use that energy drive. It's going to do 80, but then 30 more thanks to the poison and Vipers, so that will be a knockout. And at this point, all he has is a lone Gardevoir. He can play items, so that is a drawback of using Top of Lele versus Seismitoad. But I think that was the right play just in case he had like an Acerola or just a really, really good hand in general. I got rid of that threat on the board. So he's going to play another Gardevoir, attach an Energy, and Sycamore. So if he has the Spirit Link, the Mega Gardevoir, the Energy, uh, looks like he does the Dimension Valley. He's got everything he needs, so he can put a little bit of pressure on the top of Lele. But again, I don't think he can actually knock me out. Uh, he would need six on the bench, and then he'd have to get rid of all six of those Pokemon. So I don't think he can keep doing that. He's already down to just a few cards in his deck, I think eight cards. So there is the Despair Ray, uh, 130 damage. So at this point, I could Acerola and just do that again, but I think I can retreat out and just use that Shadow Triad to get back the laser and just put that pressure back on my opponent. Um, and that's really why I love Shadow Triad in here, just getting that laser back every single turn of the game. Your opponent really can't compete with that a lot of times. Um, and like I said, 50% of the time you'll put them to sleep, 25% of the time they'll stay asleep. So I mean, uh, just really aggressive with this deck.
So I'm going to go ahead and fill Bloor the Dimension Valley. I think I'm actually out of Verbank City Gems, so I don't want to give him a, a way to uh, bring up that top of Lily for a cheap knockout. And I will Quaking Punch, but since uh, Survipers are in play, that's going to be doing 30 damage instead of 10 between turns. So at this point, I think we're in very good shape. Uh, he's probably just sitting there wondering, you know, what can I do at this point? I think I'm out of spirit links. I can't really set up another mega Gardevoir unless I pass. And if I do pass, uh, he'll just bring up the top of Lele and knock me out. So he's really kind of backed in a corner here. I don't know what he can really do unless he plays like uh, Xerosix or Plumeria, Team Flare Grunt, anything to just kind of put pressure on me. But he actually has to pass. He doesn't have the energy. He doesn't have the Dimension Valley. So this is a big opening for me. Um, I think Tapu Lele can actually do enough damage to get the knockout. Um, I think he's doing 60 right now. And then 20 more from Survivors, And then 10 from Poison. So I think it's actually perfect math if I can retreat out and attack so i will go ahead and use energy drive i'm making sure the math is right but i think it's exactly right so that 30 damage will knock out gardevoir and what is our opponent going to do at this point i don't even know what he can do because uh he's out of resources and there you go we see our opponent concede there because there's not much he can do and you guys saw how aggressive this deck was uh, it took a couple turns to get set up. We didn't have the best opening hand, but we kind of uh, went with that. We were really aggressive. We had that quaking punch and laser combo throughout the game, really consistent. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'll have more content up over the next few weeks. Uh, I do apologize again for not having a whole lot of stuff, but uh, lots of stuff going on in life, and hopefully I can get that stuff organized. But uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this deck. Do you think it'll be good going forward in the expanded format? Do you think it's easily countered around? Just let me know in the comments. Uh, I would love to hear that. But in the meantime, this has been Zach with Top Deck Nation. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.